I'm Graham Mankis, I'm the second chair in medicine in the Department of Medicine at the University of Cape Town and I'm a clinician scientist as well as an infectious diseases physician. Uh, in the context of the COVID-19 epidemic, uh, I have been involved with many colleagues in planning for the surge that we are expecting of patients presenting to our health services with COVID-19 and that involves several weeks of planning now uh, to get our systems ready, our wards ready, um, our teams ready and our healthcare workers protected uh, when we do experience a surge of patients coming into our healthcare services with COVID-19. So the, the uh, preparation of our healthcare services for COVID-19 has been a very strong collaboration between the Provincial Department of Health, Healthcare Services and the Management and Clinical Services, as well as the UCT Department of Medicine together with other departments who are providing support to the Department of Medicine in preparing for COVID-19. So it's been a, a collaboration between departments within the faculty um, and then between the Provincial Department of Health and UCT. During a pandemic, it's obviously something to be expected that people will be extremely anxious and there's uh, a lot of panic in the community. Uh, regarding the threats of a pandemic. Some of that anxiety is, is rational and uh, will lead to people to adopt behaviours which will reduce the risk of being infected with COVID-19. But some of that panic and anxiety can lead to very uh, harmful behaviours like stigmatising people that you might be uh, being investigated for the disease. And uh, also, you know, responses in society that are not helpful. So accurate information allows people to contextualise what's happening uh, in a reliable way um, and respond appropriately in a manner that will help prevent COVID-19 while not resulting in harmful behaviours like people using PPE that, that is meant for healthcare workers in the community, etc. The most important aspects of preventing COVID-19 in a hospital setting uh, are careful attention to infection control and provision of personal protective equipment. So the infection control measures involve physical distancing as is advocated in the community. So healthcare workers should always interact whether they're sitting or standing more than one and a half metres apart from one another. Uh, frequent hand hygiene, so washing the hands with uh, an alcohol based hand rub or uh, soap and water. Uh, before and after each patient encounter and then after touching objects and frequently doing that during the day. Um, also, we have a policy of wearing uh, surgical masks in the hospital and the clinical areas. And finally, uh, a policy of frequent disinfection of surfaces and objects and careful attention to not unnecessarily touching surface, surfaces and objects because obviously they can be contaminated with COVID-19. So those are the, some of the practices in terms of infection control. And then obviously the provision of personal protective equipment when interacting with patients and particularly in high risk settings um, and when aerosols are being produced that healthcare workers have um, in that setting the appropriate personal protective equipment that includes N95 masks and uh, eye protection. We have spent the last six weeks uh, preparing at Khrodeski Hospital for the surge of patients. We have had many patients now coming through our wards with COVID-19. Uh, so we have experience of managing patients with COVID-19 and you know, working them up in terms of initially the, the diagnosis and then the, you know, treating those patients in the wards and some of them have required ICU. Um, so we've, we've, we've gained experience. Uh, in the management, in the investigation and management of COVID-19. Um, but, you know, the, what we have learned is that, that this is an evolving epidemic and we're confronted with novel situations all the time. So the systems that we put in place um, need to be revised on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Uh, and we need to look for gaps in the infection control and the risks to healthcare workers and try and address those gaps so that we are continually improving our safety for the healthcare workers and the patients in our hospital. So, you know, I don't think we are ever 100% ready, but we're certainly a lot more ready now than we were six weeks ago. Uh, 
in terms of motivating staff in the context of COVID-19 and what the challenges that we're going to face, I think the key is to give people time to prepare psychologically, uh, to realise that they're in it together um, and that this is a collective effort, um, and to really ensure that they, there's a good team uh, spirit and that people feel like there's strong leadership uh, in, within those teams. And I think that plays a big role in maintaining uh, motivation of the teams um, and also giving people to, uh, an opportunity to speak about their anxieties and also an opportunity to speak uh, about where they find deficiencies in the system and where they, they think there are gaps and where there's room for improvement. If people feel that they're making a contribution to the, the whole team effort and that their voice is being listened to, I think that's a very big motivating factor for the staff that we're working with. There's some important messages that we want to share with the community. The first is that we urge people to still stay at home unless they need to have necessary travel outside the home. The more we maintain physical distancing, the more we will prevent COVID-19. When one is in a public space, and obviously many people will need to be in a public space with essential work and going shopping, to remember the importance of hand hygiene, so washing your hands with soap or water, or an alcohol-based hand rub frequently, the importance of physical distancing, being 1.5 metres or more apart from other people when one's in a social setting, and then, as our government has advised, using cloth face masks in a public setting and taking uh, careful uh, care of those cloth face masks when you take them off to avoid contaminating your hands. And then, uh, to, in, a, in a work setting, to remember that one needs to frequently uh, decontaminate uh, surfaces and objects because they can become contaminated with COVID-19.